Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, great players, but how do they anchor a good team? Thoughtful comments from Joe Mazzula, and why aren't the Celtics shooting quite as many corner three-pointers for a team that loves to shoot three-pointers? Going to examine all of it right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry O.B. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Prime time, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finished. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics Podcast, right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day, and I got you every day with a free, fresh podcast that's dropped directly to your device, so make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcast, whichever app you use, you know what to do, open it up, hit that subscribe button, hit the same thing on the YouTube page, get into the comment section, let me know what you're thinking about the Boston Celtics, this podcast, what I'm saying, what we're saying here. If you don't know me by now, I'm John Corrales. I used to play a long time ago. Now I'm covering the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. Uh, before we go uh, into the show, I do want to thank people who were making donations uh, to my sister's GoFundMe. As I said in a, a previous show earlier this week, my sister uh, lost her husband this week to pancreatic cancer. Uh, we've been doing the GoFundMe. Uh, it's I put up this the thing here on the uh, screen here on YouTube. Uh, K-A-R-A-L dot I-S slash GoFundMe. Type that into your browser. Uh, people who donate 25 bucks can be entered into a raffle to hop on for a segment. If you enter, if you donate a hundred dollars or more, you can, uh, you enter into a raffle to, um, co-host the show with me. Now you gotta email your receipts. And I forgot to do this in the first show. So you gotta email your receipts to lockedonceltics at gmail.com. I, cause I'm not sure that everybody who donates this money is entered. And I'm not even hundred percent sure that all of these people are listeners to the podcast. So I want to make sure I'm not like contacting somebody who donated a hundred bucks and it's like his old boss. And he's like, I don't know a damn thing about the Celtics. So email your receipts to lockdown Celtics at gmail.com. So many of you are so generous. I really do appreciate all of that. Today's show is sponsored by who is it sponsored by John FanDuel FanDuel. Uh, Make every make every moment more in FanDuel. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150. If your team wins, go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. I got Tom Westerholm with me. And well, how's it going, Tom? Good, man. How are you? Oh, I'm great. I'm great. Because I, I I have a fun show, I think. Hey, uh man. two two things out of the last game. Joe Mazzula made some insightful comments about about the Jays and and, and their anchoring of a good team which is different than just being two good players with a bunch of role players yeah uh we'll talk about that and then later on we'll get into the corner three-pointers just interesting numbers i'm kind of curious i'm not sure what it all means but the Celtics don't take or haven't all season it's a little bit different recently but corner three everybody wants a corner three-pointer and the Celtics kind of haven't taken a bunch of them so we'll explore all of that stuff but uh the jays uh, it very, I I love the way Joe Mazzula thinks things through. I I really do think that he's he's challenging a lot of uh, ways that people look at things, and he's adding perspective to parts of the game that maybe people just don't even think about, like Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, two All Stars, two All NBA players, who are the two best players on a team with you know a bunch of good players. And the way that they um, have to act around the team that has not just those two guys, but Holiday, Derek White, Kristaps Porzingis, all really good players. Al Horford, who's reduced role, but is is still you know if he if he got more time, he'd probably have a little bit more production. Uh, in in and Joe had a, a very long quote, but he. Part of it is these two have to navigate being all stars in a good team that goes overlooked today because there's like two all stars and a bunch of role players, and we have four, five, six all stars in a really well balanced team. We can't be who we are if those guys don't have the humility to be who they are and at the same time make each other better. 
And it's, I don't know, Tom, I think it's really interesting that the dynamic of it's not just being good basketball players. It's being great teammates and making the other guys better, not always with the assist, but by being in the right place and making the right play and all of that stuff. It's, it's a, a, maybe a little bit more of a challenge than they get credit for. And, you know, I, I, I don't know. I think, I think it was a really great point by Missoula. I think so too. And I think when you look, okay. So like I got two examples to kind of hammer that home, right? Like you look around the league and it's like, I think a perfect example is uh, of this is like Shea Gilgis Alexander, right? Where he's on a, a good team, right? Yeah. But you just, you don't think like Shea Gilgis Alexander is going to be, you know, putting a, you know, you're going to be ringed up after this season, right? Like you just, there's sure. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. I like the thunder. I think they got a lot of, I think they got, you know, some good stuff there, but like, yeah, you got Shea out there averaging 30 points a game on that team. And that's kind of, and that's the opposite, right. Of the Celtics here. Cause like the Celtics have all this star talent. And I think it's an easier example, right. Is you go back to 2006, 2007, Paul Pierce, 25 points a game, which yeah. at that time, you know, like <laughs> Point inflation, kind of similar to say Gilgis <laughs> Alexander scoring 30 a game. The next season, you know, uh, people might remember 2007, 2008, Paul Pierce, kind of an important time, 19.6. And it, it's just like, in a, you know, important time. Hmm. 19.6, like six. This was not a guy who was on the come down in his career at that stage, but no. six points per game less, like just boom, gone. And you look at this Celtics team and it's like, you know, like, yeah, that, that 07, 08 Celtics team was stacked, right? Obviously this Celtics team also stacked and yeah, you're, you, you are seeing like sacrifices being made. Like they're not just, they're not just saying that every time the Celtics talk about like sacrifices and how, you know, yeah, this can be a little difficult for guys sometimes. And it can be a little, it can be a little challenging to, um, you know, to kind of see your stats come down to see, um, you know, to, to, to maybe you sit on the bench down the stretch because, there's six really excellent players and only five of them can play at a time. And, you know, there's um, yeah, like maybe there's there's minutes cut here and there and there's there's shots that have to go around. And then there's, you know, guys coming off the bench who can shoot threes and threes are super valuable. So they eat up some of those shots and some of those possessions like these are real sacrifices that these guys are making from a basketball perspective. And, yeah, I think like, you know, you talk about a championship team, you talk about a great team, right? Like a team that can win a title that really has a chance to. To, to do something special sacrifices are going to be made because it's not just a two person team. And you know, this is kind of what I had touched on this, uh, you know, two days ago, like, yeah, Derek white is not a role player. He's really he good. And Kristaps Porzingis is not a role player. Drew holiday is not a role player. Like the Al Horford is like not, I mean, I guess he's kind of a role player at this stage, but even him, it's like, if he's a role player, it's like, you know, you're, you're splitting hairs between like B plus and a minus there. You know, it's like mm -hmm. they, these guys are really good players. So yeah, there's, yeah, there's sacrifices that have to be made. And that that's what happens on a, on a really great basketball team. They're getting about two fewer shots per game each, uh, this season. You think, Oh, it's just two couple of shots, not a big deal, but you know, it is a big deal for Jason Tatum. Think about Jason Tatum. First team all NBA, you're taking 19 and a half shots per game. Like what? That's not that's not how superstars are supposed to go. You're supposed to get like 25 shots a game. Right? Especially superstars at his stage, right? Because right. like this is where he's coming into his own. Like, like I, I know I said before, like Paul Pierce wasn't on the on you know the downswing of his career or anything, but he'd like he'd had his big upswing, you know. He was like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. he was coasting like right along at the top there. Tatum is like you know, he's this is he's, he's, he's still rising just, a little bit. Like yeah, he's just stepping into his prime. Mm -hmm. Jalen Brown is squarely in his prime. He's getting 18 shots a game. Yeah. And that's you know, that that's meaningful because again, Jalen Brown normally on any other team is getting 23, 24 shots per game. Mm -hmm. So that's something that is not um that doesn't go unnoticed. And they they can they can score more points. I think the the efficiency numbers can change. Yeah. I and I think part of what's going on here, and we'll we'll carry this into the next segment. And it kind of flows into the third segment because there might be an opportunity for these guys to just 
hey, maybe you do flow into the corners more than you were used to doing. Um, and and just be floor spacers in a sense, but like maybe you just change your shot profile a, a little bit because also Jason Tatum shooting 35% from three, uh, Jalen Brown's shooting 33 and a half. Like those numbers are, are low, really, really low for those guys. I know they're, they're not 40% three point shooters, but they're better than that. So they can still find a way to score with this amount of shots. But the good thing is they're doing these other things and they're impacting the game in positive ways while still not shooting well. And that's been an Achilles heel for them in, in, in the past. That's been something that when they haven't shot well in prior seasons, the whole thing kind of falls apart. And that's, it's, it's a little, it's kind of impressive that that's not the case this time around. Uh, let's, let's take a second here. We'll, we'll get into their roles, that efficiency and, and all of that stuff uh, a little bit more in just a second. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sports book for good reason, because they have these amazing offers like place of any winning $5 money line bet, and you can get $150 in bonus bets. It's very simple. You go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. You sign up. You make a $5 bet. It wins. Boom. You get your money, and you get $150 in bonus bets that you can use on a very super easy to use app, you scroll through, you can see the leagues, you can get into the leagues, into the games. The games are all broken up very nicely. You can play spreads, player props, over-unders, tons more, same game parlays. You can stack your bets, all kinds of fun ways to maybe uh, enjoy basketball or other sports like football, you know, a little bit more. It's always fun to have a little bit of skin in the game. FanDuel.com slash locked on is where to go for these amazing deals. And the best part about FanDuel, which is the official partner of the NFL, is they've got ways to protect yourself. You know what your budget is. You know what you can spend a week. This is just like going out and you're spending. If you spend 50 bucks going out, maybe you don't go out and you say, hey, FanDuel, let me set up my limits. Here's my limits. And they will take care of you so you can go ahead and gamble responsibly. Thank you for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out the first ever. 24 7 streaming all sports channel locked on sports today go subscribe there after you're done listening to this show because you just it's like all day sports every day seven days a week turn it on right like when you're done here just turn it on they're talking about something something big so uh it's it's fun to just put it on have it in the background when you're cleaning your house or at the office or whatever so go check that out uh on youtube uh, let's get Tom back in here. Uh, before the break, I was talking about how just th this is still so early in the season that, you know, they've played 22 games, 20 Jalen's played 21 so early in the season. It's like, we've got our first quarter of the year and they go, okay, how is this working the way we've been doing it? This is about the time where maybe the team and Joe and these guys sit down, they say, okay, what if we tweak ever so slightly there, there might be the possibility of like working on getting these guys a little bit more efficient shots. So it's not all just pull-ups, early offense, that kind of stuff. I would like to see those guys get a lot more catch and shoot opportunities just so they can get, I think it's important, Tom, to get them some scoring chances while you're asking them to sacrifice and i know it's weird to say this about tatum and brown but like let's find some easy ways just get them some easy buckets and and then you, you just kind of like uh, as a little bit of a thank you find a way to get them some easier looks rather than have them try to do a lot of it themselves yeah and i think one of the encouraging things right is that we've seen jalen get those um by with his cutting Right. Like that's been like a big thing this year is like he's yes. getting himself some of those easy buckets that way. Um, yeah. I mean, the catch and shoot threes. I think the one of the challenges with that, right, is that 
one of the guys creating a lot of those catch and shoot threes is Tatum um, by, by collapsing everything down. Right. Sure. And like, that's a, sure. you know, that's, I mean, honestly, that's kind of to something that you said a lot during the off season, right. Where it's like, you know, if like, if Tatum's collapsing everything, that's great. But then Tatum's not the one taking the shot because the defense all sucked into him. And now he's, yeah. you know, now he's the passer and okay. But you know, are you sure you don't want Tatum taking that offense? And I think, I think there was validity to that then and now. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, I think, this, I think, I think to your point, it's, it's really nice if you're, if you're a star player and you can get a couple of those, of those easy looks, um, just what, a, what a difference maker that can be. You look at Tatum's three point numbers. I haven't checked them in like two days. I can't imagine in like two games. I can't imagine they've changed much, but like off the dribble, he's been real low and off the catch. He's been really high. Like he's been struggling to shoot threes off the dribble this season. And, and I think, you know, he, he, He's good. He can hit those shots. He can hit the 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 off the dribble, the side steps, the the step backs, all that stuff. But just bread and butter, it's just so much easier to to shoot a catch and shoot three. Get him a few of those. You might be in better shape. Yeah, that and I think the the growth of Derek White, the growth of maybe you like as Drew Holiday gets going a little bit more running. The pick and roll, like you can, you can run pick and roll with Derek White and anybody, yeah. right? And yeah. so, the Celtics can run some creative stuff to get that pick and roll run in a in a way where you you know you you get a, a cut and an off ball, some off ball action, and next thing you know, Jalen and Holiday are on the right side. And Tatum is on the left side, and you create what's called a single side bump where there's one defender and two guys that he has to make a decision on. And those types of things, um, I think schematically can be something that maybe get Tatum or Brown some some easier looks. And hey, if you've got Tatum spaced out in the corner and you run a pick and roll with with Derek White going down to that side. And like, what do you do? Do you leave Jason Tatum in the corner or do you let Derek White keep going to the rim? Derek White's got the best rim uh, restricted area field goal percentage. Um, so like it's it, it you, the Celtics have now established some things in this first quarter of the season that when teams are looking, okay, how do we defend this iteration of the Boston Celtics? You go, okay, well, wait a minute. We can't let Derek White get to the rim. He's going to finish. We can't let Kristaps Porzingis pop because he's going to hit those shots. We we can't look. There's a lot of things that a team will look at the Celtics and go, "Well, we can't do that. Well, we can't do that. Oh, we can't do that either." Like, what the hell can we do to defend this team? And that's why we focus so much on the ball movement. And that's why Jalen's recent play is so important. Yeah, he's been getting off the ball. He, you know, there's a couple of turnovers in there, like for both of these guys. Okay, fine. Like yeah. it's going to happen. We can't, we can't, you know, go crazy o- over each one, but they're and Jalen, especially they're getting off the ball sooner in this progression. Now we're into the second quarter of the season. That progression now leads to more ball movement and you have to pay attention to the other guys. Maybe that's what flows into a, a few more corner three pointers. And that's, that's kind of like the, the, the next thing that I wanted to talk about. Cause I think that goes into, I think the way the Celtics who over the course of the season have not just the bigger picture of the season have not taken a ton of corner three pointers. I think if you just add a couple for Jason and a couple for Jalen schematically, you're going to find out you, you the Celtics are going to get to the top of the league in corner three pointers, higher value shots, and they're going to be getting them to two of their best guys. So I, I think that maybe one of the challenges for Joe Mazzula moving forward here is how do we take advantage of Derek White being what he is, Porzingis proving to be what he is without a ton of touches, Holiday getting more comfortable and being who he is, like those guys, Hauser stepping up and and being a very valuable player, like. How do you take advantage of those things happening to say we're gonna we're gonna actually find a way to to split the Jays off into the corners and go, here you go, easy shots. Yeah, and I think 
the the encouraging thing for the Celtics, right, is that like we we are picking some nits here, right? Like this is a this is a good offense, right? Like I think yes. they're I believe they're sixth or seventh right now on cleaning the glass. Like good offense, you know, top point differential in the league. And yeah, you look at the personnel on this team and they can be better. Like there's there are tweaks that can be made. There are things that can be ironed out. Um, you know, there are efficiencies that they can examine. And I think to your point at the top of the show, they have a coach who is going to examine all those things. Like Joe Missoula yeah. pokes at things and like pulls on things and is like, what, 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 would, <laughs> what would this do? Like, yeah, that's, that's, what, like what a great like thing great to have. Football. Like what a great, you know, quality to have as a coach is somebody who's just kind of, you know, sees a thread, pulls on thread and, you know, kind of yeah, see if this unravels in a cool way. My example is always going to be Bill Fitch yelling at young Larry Bird not to take three pointers. And that was the conventional thought back then. And if somebody were to tell you, like this conversation, if we were to have this conversation around Bill Fitch, like how can we find a way to get Larry Bird three or four shots from the corner three pointer? And he's going to be like, go, go blank yourself because no, that's a low percentage shot. And be like, you know, the, the math didn't present itself as what it was uh, back then. People didn't buy into it like they did back then. And now here's Joe challenging things like the missed layup thing that we're, we've been talking about where, Hey, if a, a layup that's challenged at the rim actually has a lower field goal percentage than a wide open corner three pointer. So why are you taking challenged layups? You know, and people just think because you take layups, because you always take layups. Why wouldn't you take a layup? I'm like, no, actually, you you don't. And and maybe that leads to some guys passing out of what looks like an open layup. Okay, there's a little bit of the pendulum swinging. We're going to have to figure that out. It's going to have to settle somewhere. But this is, I think, a period of transition. Joe is actually, like you said, pulling on strings. And he's more than willing to be like, I don't think that that's actually as important as you think it is. and. And to challenge that, and and sometimes that's off-putting, but I love it. I love it because I have a way that I think about basketball. And Joe has, in the past, talked to me and been like, why? And I'm like, well, that's just Because basketball, Joe. That's <laughs> how it is. That's right. It's just how you play basketball. And he's like, is it? it? Is it? I, is it? I don't know. And he'll tell me. He's like, I don't know if I'm right. I don't know if you're right. But is it? And it's like, wow. I don't know. I don't know. Is it? And you have a conversation. You're like, maybe, maybe it's not. And you know, it, 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 it's fun. Let's continue. Somebody, this somebody needed to have that conversation with Bill Fitch. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Oh, uh, can you imagine Larry Bird with free reign to shoot three pointers? My goodness. All right. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But first today's show is brought to you by Dave. Dave is a banking app that is going to change kind of the way you look at financial help because it's going to help you get uh, build your credit by you settling extra cash uh, advances uh, on time. They, they You sign up right now, go to the banking app, go to the Dave banking app, and you can get up to $500 in five minutes or less. No credit check, no late fees, no nothing. Uh, it's all part of Dave's extra cash account. You advance the money you need with no interest, and then you settle up later. If you do that, they can help you rebuild your credit. If you're having some trouble, yeah, look, I've been there, you know, a long time ago. I had some struggles financially. Uh, apps didn't exist. The internet was in its infancy. I could have used Dave, uh, you know, a banking app that's leveling the playing field. So it's, it's a great way to help you build your credit. And, you know, hey, if you're in a pinch, you can get the help you need by downloading Dave. Millions of people have already done it. You can do it by going to dave.com slash locked on NBA. Dave.com slash locked on NBA. Uh, go get up to $500 in five minutes or less. No credit check, no late fees. Download the Dave app now. Dave.com slash locked on NBA. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Eligibility criteria and instant transfer fees apply. Banking services provided by Evolve, member FDIC. Thank you for making uh, Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. 
Thank you to all the everydayers. Uh, go check out the Locked On NBA podcast after you're done with this as well. Uh, Locked On NBA covers the whole league. Draymond Green suspended indefinitely for his cowardly, stupid, swinging, pirouette punch to Yusuf Nurkic's face. I'm kind of done with Draymond Green at this point. But they are going to cover it all on the Locked On NBA podcast, so go check it out there. And we're going to continue our Draymond Green less conversation here. Uh, I would with, have a Tom, Draymond Green conversation with you if you wanted to, but I I would love to, but uh, that's maybe after we're done here, no. uh, where we can we can use the type of language that I want to use when discussing <laughs> uh, Draymond Green. Who and it's just a shame. It's just a shame that this is what he's become. Uh, anyway, anyway, corner three pointers. Uh, so over the last six games, things have changed a little bit. The Celtics have taken uh, a few more corner three-pointers, right? They are fourth in the league as far as corner three-pointers taken with 11.7 per game. They are, uh, I believe on second spectrum, they are number one in frequency of corner three-pointers. So maybe they've turned a corner. Maybe this conversation is a little bit of a different one uh, now than it was prior to the last six games. But before that, and this is the Celtics kind of like maybe trying to figure things out, they were in the middle of the pack in corner three pointers. And I asked Joe Missoula about that because they, th for the season, they're still at 8.3 per game. They make a bunch 42.6. That's, that's right up there in the top six. Uh, that's good. They, they make the ones that they take, but they, they haven't all season taken many. I, I don't know, Tom, there are a lot of different ways you can go with this for a team that loves a three pointer for the team that, is into the math for the team that Joe Missoula is always like, you, what's the best shot? What's the best possible shot you can take? Open corner three pointers are the Holy grail of NBA offenses. And I, I just found it odd that the Celtics at least up until recently haven't been kind of getting a lot of those shots. Yeah, and I, I, we were talking before before we came on, and I, I was I kind of admitted that I like you know this is not something that I've done a deep dive on film with or anything, but I, I do wonder, I, I do wonder a little bit if this is partly due to like how much the Celtics like to drive closeouts and how much they like to swing the ball, right? Because like if you so if, you, if you, a lot of times right if you, if you get that ball to the corner, somebody's going to be flying at you because to your point, everybody knows now that that shot is one of the best yeah. shots you can take, maybe the best shot you can take, maybe like maybe the most efficient shot in basketball, the corner three pointer, like right. people are flying at that shot. And, you know, like the Celtics have done a nice job of attacking that, you know, they've got a lot of guys who can, who can dribble out of that and then, you know, pass it somewhere else. Or, you know, a guy comes over from, from above the break, you swing the ball to that guy, that guy's got an open three. Like those are good shots too. Celtics fifth in catch and shoot threes, right? So, so they're not getting the corner threes, but they are getting a lot of catch and shoot threes. Mm -hmm. So I do wonder a little bit if, if some of it to this point has just been, Hey, like we, we, we'd love to get those shots. We get the ball to the corner sometimes, but people are closing out hard and you know, you're still focused on getting threes. So you, you know, you, you swing the ball, you, you, you drive the clothes out, you kick out, whatever it might be. Um, and if that's been part of it. And I think too, Another thing that we kind of touched on beforehand, but like Chris Dapps Porzingis obviously plays a role in this too, where, yeah. um, you know, his threes are much less likely to be corner threes just purely by, uh, by, by means of his, his position. So, yeah. um, like a few things there, but yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, I think to me, the really interesting thing is that their numbers are going up, right? Like that there has been kind of a trend in that direction, yeah, which cuts against some of the things that I just said. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, it it is interesting. Like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what led to this and and what's led to the change. I do think that there there are a couple of things that you notice. Just eye test. They they love early offense pull up three pointers, and Derek White lives off of those. Uh, Tatum loves to take them. Jalen loves to take them. Those are all above the break threes. Holiday loves to take. Them. Holiday loves to take them. No, none of those. Literally zero are a our corner three pointers are all above the break. It would be very difficult uh, to take a pull up corner three pointer. That'd be very, very difficult. I think Damian Lillard might be like, I one could of pull them. it off. Hey, of course you can. 
Uh, the other thing is like Al Horford's moved to the bench. Like Al took yeah, all true, the corner three true. pointers last season. Like he took all of them. Um, and Porzingis is running high pick and roll and pick and pops. And those are above the break. So uh, a lot of the, the actions that they've been running this year have been with Porzingis and he lives above the break. And that's just a shot that he takes and he can take them. And part of why they got him is because he can take those and take them from like 30 feet. Yeah. And like not a big deal. So Horford not being out there as much and living in the corners, I think had a, like a little bit of an impact. And I, I just think that so much of this is a function of Tatum and Brown and Porzingis running a lot of stuff in the middle of the floor and the pops, the pick and pops go out above the break. And I do think that there's something to what you're saying. I do think that kicking it out to the corner attacking a closeout, collapsing the defense, and then kicking it high opposite to the above the break three on the opposite side, that leads to above the break three. So there's I'm I'm curious and the the, the problem is I just don't have the the stats, the the expensive stats, the right. Right. all of the uh the ones that ESPN can afford and the ones that the teams use and all of the video that you can be like uh you know you can start to look at, oh, well, they did get the, they, they're catching it in the corner this much and they've caught it in the corner that much last year. And the difference is they took the shots last year, this year they're driving and, and, and doing that. So, uh, I wish I could get the expensive stats. Yeah, you should, you should talk to some, uh, talk to some head honchos and just talk, like, cause there is, there is one specific site that if we could have access to, we would just have all the answers. Like there, oh, would, be yeah. no, there would be no guesswork. Uh, it would just be like, oh yeah, no, yeah, here, here's, here's, here's the answer to your question. A lot uh, of it is we're like asked to make fire and given two sticks and we can, we can make a spark and we can, we can make fire with two sticks. We're good at that. But then some people are asked to make fire and they're like, here's a blowtorch. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, sure. A backpack full of lighter fluid. Just, yeah. Great. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. No problem. Yeah, you just, I'm just going to be over here. <laughs> you just talk. I, I got this. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. uh, well, uh, to your point, uh, here's, here's a couple sticks for you. Um, <laughs> almost 80 per, like uh, if you, if you add up the usage of, uh, of, of Jalen, Jason and Porzingis, uh, to your point, uh, those guys shoot more above the break threes. It's like 80%. Like when those three guys are on the floor, that's a, a lot of usage. That's a lot. You have access to usage percentage. Yes, that's true. So it's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, it, it's interesting. I, I do think that back to the, you know, tying it back into the, the Tatum and Brown thing. I do think that kind of looking at the, the shot quality and, and, and where they're getting these three pointers, maybe, maybe finding some schematic ways, play calls, tweaking some play calls, adding some play calls, like I said before, to get some guys specifically shots in the corner might be just a little tweak that Joe does, you know, um, moving forward. I think that's something that can only help these guys. Um, and it's good to kind of have something in your back pocket, a play or two that, that kind of gets you there because you're going to need those every once in a while and finding ways to get some of these very impactful players into the middle of the paint and spraying it out to the corner to good shooters. It, it's going to be important. It's as I'm talking, I'm like my brain, <laughs> like you also have to be careful of like the Celtics driving specifically to pass. And you don't want to always be driving to pass because then they just take away the passing lanes. But that's a, that's an entirely different conversation. I probably shouldn't have even brought that up, but my brain, my well, brain, stall, man. To it, which is that the Celtics also have a lot of guys who can score really well in the paint. To your point, yep. Derek White, like Jason Derek Tatum, just, the Jason, key to Jason Tatum gets his shoulder into people and it's, it's just yeah. absolutely over for them. Like, yeah, there's, it, there's not a ton of danger of the Celtics just driving to pass. No. I, feel like. I think it's, I yeah. think, I think Derek White's the, like the absolute key to all of this because yeah. he can do everything. He can hit the floater. So it's like, Oh, you're going to back off. Yeah. Oh, no problem. I'll just hit the floater. 
and you're like, oh god, we gotta we gotta cover this now. So it's my like, desk is made of wood. Also, he's extremely available, and I'm I'm knocking on that for his sake. But he, <laughs> he's he's also very available. So protect Derek White at all costs. Absolutely. That's that's I think maybe maybe that's gonna be the title of this podcast. Just protect Derek White at all costs. He is he is we talked about it for like 30 seconds at the end of the pod, but yeah, like, uh, let's, yeah, let's just say let's just figure. Yeah, whatever. Uh I don't know. Interesting stuff, I think. Celtics yeah. play the Cavs again. I want to just yeah. kind of see if there's a... Uh, oh, by the way, they play the Cavs again yeah. Thursday night. Uh, see what kind of wrinkles they throw at the Cavs. Maybe there'll be, maybe it'll be a bunch of corner threes, and Joe Mazzulla will like stare at me in the post game, be like, "How about that now, John? You happy now? You happy?" Uh, it's, it'd be good. That'd be good to be get him off of Gary Washburn. Yeah, he's got, I was gonna say. I was gonna say it would give it would give Gary a little break, but but yeah. then you know Gary would have to ask about the threes and you know yeah, it could, <laughs> it'd be a whole thing. It'd be great. Yeah. All right, Tom. Appreciate you as always. Appreciate you, man. And I always appreciate you, the listener. You at work. You maybe taking a shower right now, or walking the dogs, or you know driving to work, or whatever it is that you are doing. Just appreciate you making the Celtics. Uh, Locked on Celtics podcast, part of your daily routine. Now, all of you everydayers, I would love it if you shared the podcast and spread the word. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell everybody that they should be listening to and watching the Locked on Celtics podcast right here on the Locked on Podcast Network. It's your team every day.